Making the trip from North Carolina each and every week to strap into the Chris Osetic build number 55 seems like a daunting task for most, but not for Keith Champagne. With the year of racing already under their belts with this new number 55, expectations were high to park it in Victory Lane in 2017. 67th opening day found Champagne starting fourth, and the car was super hooked up throughout the early laps, trailing Barnes and Siderly. Champagne seemed to be having trouble keeping the car down in the corners as cars began to close in and pass the slowing Champagne. Then on lap six, Champagne's mount smacked the backstretch wall with what looked to be a flat right front. The 55 would be forced pitside with the DNF to start the 2017 campaign. One upside to an early season DNF, a handicapped start on the outside pole the following race for the 55 with Champagne. Keith would jump out to the early lead in the 75 lap Jim Champagne Memorial, passing David Gruel off turn two of the opening circuit. Champagne was able to navigate traffic with ease until a close call on lap 49. Champagne narrowly avoided a pinning Howard Page off turn two, but not before losing his big lead to a closing Team Nicotra. A now damaged front wing would upset the aero balance of the Ossetic 55 and would eventually lose the lead to Shulik Jr. a few laps later. A late race caution would then find Shulik heading pit side, thus handing the lead back to Champagne for the final nine laps. The 33-year-old Champagne found two of the fastest veteran drivers glued to his bumper in the closing laps, but Champagne had too much on the line to let this victory slip away. He Champagne was not only able to grab his first ever Oswego Super Modified victory, but winning his Uncle Jimmy's memorial race was a dream come true. So what does a driver do the following race after capturing your first win in over 10 years of competition? How about start up front and lead every lap while holding off Dave Schulich Jr. to win your second feature in as many races back to back? Champagne was able to bring home another top 10 finish in the second Twin 35 to finish out the month of June. The month of July found some tough sledding for the 55 of Champagne as his average starting position of 10th found him mired mid-pack for many of the events early on. Champagne's first top five of the month came on July 15th with a solid fourth place finish with points chaser Barnes just ahead. Champagne followed it up with another fourth place run the following week to close out July at the Steel Palace. August saw the 55 car back in championship form as he battled from his seventh starting spot to chase down leader Gosick and Abold for much of the race. Champagne would garner another podium finish with a strong third place and pick up some points on everyone finishing behind him. With two races remaining to gain some points on Schulich and hold off Michael Barnes, Champagne would need to stay consistent and hopefully get a few more podium or top five finishes. August 12th would be a standard points night for Keith as he never seemed to have the car hooked with the new traction formula added to the outside group. When championship night rolled around, Champagne knew for sure he could not claim the title with a 90 point deficit. A solid top three in points would surely put a cap on this dream season for Champagne, and Keith was able to stay out of trouble and claim another top 10, finishing seventh. The North Carolina driver would garner two wins, six top fives, and nine top tens en route to third in points. Congratulations to the driver of the TJ Toyota Ascetic Racing 55, Keith Champagne.